So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, so this has been a really exciting uh, two-day session. Uh, and we have heard uh, several awesome uh, talks today, uh, all of them delivering uh, key insights into several critical components in this uh, ecosystem of software-defined uh, vehicles uh, enabled by you know, SOFI. Now, uh, in this uh, overall space, you know, for our talk, we want to focus on uh, delivering two important messages. One is that what we have is a pre-silicon development environment for SOFI compatible software stack on virtual hardware, enabling um, hardware software code development. And uh, second, that this stuff is real, and that's the second part of this talk. So if really we can leave you with these two messages, I will consider our talk to be a success today. With that, Arvind, we can uh, go to the first slide. We heard um, yesterday, I think, during uh, the first uh, opening remarks from Bill Foy about the shift left trend and its enablement by um, CNF and, and SOFI. A couple of factors that we have listed here uh, driving this demand of um, shifting left is one is the hyper competitive market race and, and then long software uh, development cycles. Um, but beyond that, automakers also need to make decisions on silicon way before they get their hands on it. So it's a, for, for many OEMs, this is a paradigm shift. This is where there is a need for hardware software co-development, and this is what this talk is about. We provide a pre-silicon environment that allows software development as well as performance analysis. And that's how we enable the shift lift to address some of the problems that um, you know, the OEMs are facing. Um, as an example, Conrad, I think during his presentation on mixed criticality spoke about container startup times. So, so that's as one of the key performance metrics. That's a good example of a performance metrics that this solution can earn, enable early on the design, uh, design cycle. Moving on to slide number two, um, this slide, uh, the next slide, thanks, shows the three major components of the solution. And each component here, it comes with a rich set of reference and inbuilt components but is also highly configurable. So the first is a front end. So it's a unified IDE for development for engineers. It has capabilities for debug and profiling heterogeneous software environments, but also enables visualization and analysis of, of different uh, dimensions of data, like whether it is uh, CPU activity in uh, single cores or multi cores, looking at processes on trade activities, um, file systems activity, um, memory bandwidth, and, and even application data visualization. The second big component is a configurable software environment, and we will talk more about that in the next slide. But essentially, it's a Linux enabled um, uh, with uh, EWAOL layers. And the third component is a virtual hardware environment, which is also configurable. So. Uh, users can use these as a basis to focus on their product differentiation instead of focusing on the creation of yet another platform. It's highly configurable. So within minutes or less than an hour, this reference platform can be configured to change the number of CPUs, clusters, the type of CPUs. And the core idea here is that this is a hybrid platform. So it's run fast and run accurate, which means it allows users to run large amounts of software quickly on virtual system and then accurately run the portions of software they're most interested in in RTL to collect more accurate metrics connected to hardware. And when running accurately, the same virtual platform as shown on the bottom right hand side here, the hydro platform seamlessly supports simulation, emulation and FPGA prototyping, offering users the flexibility to start, uh, strike the right balance between um, um, speed and comp compilation time in a very seamless way. Now the virtual uh, platform comes with the necessary platform peripherals to boot an OS. And we have extended this, as I mentioned earlier, to a solution that comes with a reference SOFI stack booting out of the box. 
Um, going on to the next slide, a um, few quick comments um, on the uh, software stack. So uh, there we have a so-called Flex OS, a Yocto-based uh, embedded Linux that where we have enabled the EWL um, base bare metal configuration. And um, this uh, FlexOS has already found um, applications in industrial use cases in robots and transportation, among other domains. And this picture shows how this stack fits in in relation to the Sophie stack. Going back to where I st uh, started, we want to deliver again two key messages that we have a pre-silicon hardware software co-development environment for Sophie. And second, that this stuff is real. And for that part, Arvind will talk more about this software stack, its relation to the demo, and walk through some of the components in the demo. Arvind, over to you. OK, thank you, Unmesh. Um, so uh, my colleague Unmesh has uh, given a great introduction about our hybrid uh, pre-silicon environment and um, today uh, you know this is basically the content of the demonstration that we plan to show um, so this hybrid environment that we have for pre-silicon exploration development verification use cases consists of hardware and software uh, down below here um, uh, is basically what uh, what you, uh, what we have generated from a hardware standpoint so We'll be looking at two hardware, like analysis being performed on two hardware configurations. One is a dual Cortex A78 system, and then another one is a eight core Cortex A78 system. So, uh, you know, using our, our, our tooling, you could easily generate these virtual models um, uh, with, with the reference layers that, that, that are relevant to your applications. Uh, and, and then based on this, you could put up the software stack that comes with it. And as Unmesh pointed out, the software stack that we'd be booting today is uh, EWAL layers layered upon our so-called Flex Yocto-based Linux distribution from Siemens. And um, uh, in this environment, we'd be using our front-end tools to basically bring up uh, multiple containers running standard ARM and NTF Lite benchmarks. Uh, so what we'd be looking at is two containers. Um, uh, the first one running a TF Lite benchmark with a CPU ICC backend, and second one running TF Lite benchmark with a CPU ref backend. And we'd be looking at this particular runtime. So these containers would run sequentially, and we'd be looking at these runtimes running on the two core system and the eight core system. And, and we'd be looking at the analysis of what that looks like uh, from a profiling and analysis standpoint. So with that said, um, let me move on to the demo. So this is basically our front end tool. Um, um, and, and the perspective that you're looking at is the profiling and analysis perspective. So this tool is an integrated uh, solution. It's an IDE that allows for both debug, profiling, and analysis. Um, so from a debug standpoint, you could connect to Sophie and, and you know, debug your container-based application seamlessly uh, using this tool. But today's, uh, today's uh, discussion is focused on profiling and analysis. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, so with that said, um, what you're looking at, uh, at in the left here is basically the analysis from uh, the dual core A78 cluster. And to the right, you're looking at the analysis from uh, the eight core A78 cluster. So uh, just to give you uh, an idea of, you know, how easy it is to boot up a system. Uh, uh, let me just start up uh, our HiCon tool. So now this is basically booting up our virtual model um, on, on an emulator. And, and this is basically the run fast domain that Unmesh had pointed out. Uh, so you see that uh, the Kimio emulator comes up and it would start booting uh, the, uh, the EWAO uh, Linux system. Uh, so this is a run fast domain, right? So you could like basically bring up Linux quickly and you could basically um, uh, get to the point of interest during your Linux runtime. And let's say, you know, uh, software is being developed uh, or software being, uh, is being characterized for a particular hardware accelerator. 
So you could get to the Linux console and you can like basically insert the kernel drivers for your hardware accelerator and, and switch to a run accurate domain at that point and switch to RTL in emulation or an FPGA prototype wherein you could perform high fidelity accurate analysis of um, interactions between software and the hardware accelerator. But so that, that's, that's basically how easy it is to, to, to basically get to a Linux console. And with that said, like, let's see what we booted up to. Uh, we can just connect to um, that console. And you see that we are inside uh, a Sophie console right here. I just SSHed into the Sophie instance that just uh, booted up the EWA world instance that just booted up. So, uh, so here you see that we've booted into a eight core system. And this is uh, basically a Cortex A78 uh, based eight core uh, cluster. So that is just um, to kind of help you uh, appreciate how quickly it is to to how how easy it is and how quickly we can get to the point of interest, and now let's focus on. I'm not going to like run a, re, a full profiling run um, that could be time consuming for the time slot that we have here, but I'm going to focus on the analysis part here. So what I've done here is I've already collected data from two runs. Um, to the left is uh, data collected from a dual core run, and to the right is data connected from the eight core run. And um, uh, I'd mentioned that we have two containers, right? Both running ARM and N benchmarks, one with the CPU ACC backend um, uh, and the other with the CPU ref backend. So CPU ACC uh, is gonna be faster and the CPU ref, uh, because it uses the floating point uh, extensions and the CPU ref is gonna be slower because it just is completely CPU bound. Um, so with that said, um, so here where I'm hovering my mouse, you basically see the container runtime. And here we could perform analysis on the time it took uh, uh, to bring up the containers and you know the period for which the containers run, which is in the run state, and then time it took to shut down a container and start up another container, and then the time for the CPU ref test to run. So that's basically depicted here. And this is a very interactive tool. You could basically um, you know, add as many um, markers like this as possible, and you could interact with the tool and, uh, and you can select a waveform of interest, you can snap and make time measurements. So what we are seeing here is uh, the first container, uh, which is a CPU ACC run in the dual core system, it took about 9.6 seconds to get loaded in this uh, virtual model environment. And here in the eight core system, uh, it took about 10 seconds, which seems higher. But however, if you look at the CPU utilization here on the two core system, you see that the CPU is like close to 100% busy for most of the time. And, uh, and here in the eight core system, we see that uh, the CPU is relatively sparsely loaded and there is a lot more availability here. Um, and, and we could do a similar analysis uh, on, on perhaps uh, the ACC run. So let me just move these curses to um, uh, the first container runtime uh, and, and snap, snap the curses to the, the region that we want to uh, focus on. So I'm doing the same at both ends just to see uh, how, how uh, what the runtime looks like, right? When we're doing software design exploration at this time uh, to see um, what design changes or choices we could make in software to further optimize the system. So we see that uh, for the first container run, which is basically the CPU ACC run, um, uh, it took 4.15 seconds uh, for, to, complete, to complete the benchmark. Uh, wherein in the eight core system, we, we took 4.03 seconds. So, and, and also from, you know, the, the, the process and thread state you know, for that particular benchmark, uh, we can zoom into that part. We see that um, obviously there is a lot of parallelization happening um, uh, for, for this first benchmark because you know it's actually multi-threaded. So it could, it could basically decompose and a part of the benchmark is, is running parallel. Uh, so you see some benefits from parallel execution on the eight core system then compared to the two core system. And from the CPU workload standpoint, you see obvious benefits here between the eight core system to the right and the two core system to the left, right? And, and we could do a similar analysis on um, uh, the CPU. Uh, the, 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 the second, the tool gives you, um, just to conclude, the tool gives you a full analysis and like in a lot of 
metrics measurements capabilities and allows you to perform IP exploration. Um, and, and that basically concludes my demonstration.